Hi, Kevin Inkster here. Following is a short video from Andy Brownell uh, doing a sculpted bench seat. If you want to see a little bit more, you can visit his website. The uh, link is below. In this video, I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step process of how to build a piece like this. And you can use these skills and techniques and apply it to your own style, to your own furniture. Um, you can make a piece like this, or you can try something completely new. Australia-based Arbortech Tools has been kind enough to sponsor me over the last year as I've kind of embarked on learning how to build furniture like this. Uh, one tool that I use in particular for this project was their turbo plane. Uh, this is a kind of a cutting disc that has three carbide tips on it, attaches to any angle grinder, and it's really essential to make um, a piece with this type of form with uh, concave and convex shapes. So let's get started. So now we're ready to start shaping the piece. I'm going to start with the base and I'm going to use the Arbortech turbo plane uh, on my angle grinder here uh, to really just start getting the general uh, hourglass shape of the base roughed out. It doesn't have to be too detailed right now, it's really just taking it from this into something that's a little bit more smooth and contoured and reflects what the final piece is going to be. I'll deal with the top uh, of the seat and the bottom of the seat later on because I'm going to be flipping it up and down and I don't want to damage the final shape of the piece, so this gives me a little bit of leeway to work with there. So after having used this product for a little while, I've realized that the best location for contacting the tool blade to the material is somewhere around the 2 and 3 o'clock position. It allows you to smoothly and easily control the tool while removing a good deal of material. In this shot, I'm really hogging away a good deal of material. I'm taking a really aggressive cut, still making the contact point between the 2 and 3 o'clock position of the tool blade. It allows me to make almost like this chamfer cut and continue to create a smooth arc all the way around the entire piece. rotated the piece and followed the same principle, making a lot of small, fine peak cuts, pivoting the tool against my body to maintain a level of control. With the overall shape of the base established, I move on to the bottom of the seat. I'm shaping the seat bottom to follow a gentle curved line that you can see drawn on the edges of the seat in pencil. Now with the use of the tool, you can do a little bit flatter rather than just focusing on the 2-3 o'clock position. This allows you to remove a good deal of material along a larger, flatter surface. Now it's time to start removing the material. You can see I'm using a lot of consistent marking movements across a large portion of the piece. This allows me to maintain a level of control. As I go deeper, you can see that I'm getting closer to the bottom as the holes disappear that I drilled earlier. Again, continuous sweeping motions allow you to maintain a level of control with the tool that makes it easier to remove the waste. I'm also positioning it much flatter against the surface to create a smooth and consistent cut. 